All right. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Um, I've graded everything I have. I posted the grades today. The mini exam five, I did not count number eight. Unless you did it, then it was worth a bonus. So I only counted seven problems. Each problem is worth 10 points. So if you see on here, like you had a total of like minus 10 points, then you got 60 out of 70 points. Create the ratio, that's your grade. Then if you did the eight and you got it right, then I added 10 points, so it would be 70 out of 70, which would be 100. Make sense? So when you get these back, there's no grades on them. It's just how many points I took off. And then um, I've updated the grades online. I do have, you might have two things in here, but I did put them in order, so all of yours should be together. Okay, so please just pass this around. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Yep. Oh, I haven't added it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have, there is, I actually have a couple of bonuses from this class. The ones you're talking about are sitting in my, my, uh, my inbox in a special folder that I need to go and look at. And uh, the ones that you handed in are actually taped to my wall on, in front of my desk. So I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Don't worry. Yeah, I have not, I have not applied those to anything. I also, uh, I did one problem today for online videos um, for homework. I didn't give you a homework assignment out of 12.4 last time. I gave you a homework assignment out of 12.3. Actually, I'm, I emailed everyone because it was at the end of my notes. But for 12.4, what I'd like for you to do is one, it's actually two problems. It's page 720. This is out of 12-4. And uh, number 12 and number 18. Now, those are both even problems, so you can't check your answer. But I did, the, I did that um, online in a video. This is a problem where you have to find the center of mass, the mass, the center of mass, and the moments of inertia for some lamina. So I talked about it at the very end of class. I didn't get into it. This is an example for you, all right? We good? Okay. All righty. Twelve five. So we begin today with triple integrals. So I thought I would take just a, just a quick brief moment to remind us of kind of like the progression of things here. In Cal two. We did a regular integral like this, right? And we found the area underneath this. Yeah. And so if, if I ask you here, what is our region of integration? What is our region of integration? What are we integrating over here? You would have to look to the dx to give you some idea of that's the part that, we're, that tells us about the region. And therefore, it's actually this little line segment, that interval AB, right? So in a Cal2 integral, when we're integrating a function with respect to x, our region of integration is a line segment. And line segments are one dimensional, right? One dimension. Here, last class, we started doing these double integrals, right? And it was like double integral f of x, y, dA, and it was over some region d or r, right? That's what we were using. And so I say, well, what's the region of integration here look like? So you say, all right, well, where did this dA come from? That was the ground, wasn't it? And so that region on the ground was two-dimensional, wasn't it? And that was kind of a difficulty for us, right? Because when we have a two-dimensional region, we started to 
think about all these complexities we could get here, and so we said, look, so let's, let's try and classify these regions. We had type 1, type 2, and then we converted over to polar, right? Well, we had, we had rectangles, which was the easiest, right? Then we went to type 1, then we went to type 2, and then we went to polar, yes? Today, we're going to look at triple integrals. And it's going to be some function of three variables that we're integrating. And it's going to be res um, with respect to, let's try and guess. This is dx. x is one dimensional, just the length of this line segment. dA was the area, which was a region in two dimensional space. And this maybe will be what? Base. Volume, right? Some volume of something. It's going to be dV. And so our region of integration is actually going to live in three dimensional space. It's going to be some solid here. Now, do not make this, um, do not confuse this with what we did last time. Last time, we were finding volumes of solids between two surfaces, right? Yes? The surfaces came from this piece. Because we could draw that function, and we could have like the top cap and the bottom cap. The ground would be the region of integration. Here, this function takes in three inputs and spits out an output. I can't show you this function. It, we, we aren't going to be able to see it, all right? So what we will be able to see is its region of integration, but that's it. Do you understand the difference? Pardon? The domain, yes. The domain of it is going to be a plane. The domain, the domain of a triple integral is a solid in three-dimensional space. The domain of a double integral is a flat surface in two-dimensional space. And the domain of a traditional integral from Cal2 is going to be just a line. So one-dimensional domain, two-dimensional domain, three-dimensional domain. See the difference? OK. So if you, you might imagine these are going to, these probably even more complicated than these, right? We had enough of a hard time dealing with this, right? Now we have a third dimension. So where should we start? Where do you think we should start to make things simple to start with? Like a cube, right? Like a nice box? That's the most simple solid we're going to be able to, de be able to deal with. So that's, what, that's where we start today. And very quickly, we're going to realize that not only do these objects get hard to represent, we're going to need um, additional coordinate systems to do it. So like in, in double integrals, we use polar to help us out. And so we're going to have to use some more um, coordinate systems. So we'll have two additional coordinate systems that we'll use um, cylindrical and spherical. But that, we'll get to that when we get to it. All right, so triple integrals. Triple, a triple integral, integral over region E. So we call that region the domain E. And in this case, let's look at how we are defining uh, how we are defining the E. Okay, E is a box that where your x coordinates are bounded between two constants, the y coordinates bounded between two constants, and the z coordinate is bounded between two constants, r and s. So if I take away this, that was the rectangle from a double integral. We've added in a third dimension and bounded the z between two values. And this is what it looks like. Right? So the, the x-axis is here, the y-axis is here, Here's our box sitting in three-dimensional space. Does everyone see that our x values are stuck between two places? Our y values, so these are x values. Our y values are between two places, but now our z values are stuck between two constants. Notice that if you take this box and you look at the shadow that it casts onto the ground, all right? So imagine you have a light source up top, and you cast this shadow down what does the shadow look like on the ground here? That, that looks like uh, the region that we dealt with with double integrals, isn't it? Isn't that just a double integral region? 
That would be a rectangle from double in integrals. Now that's important because of where we're kind of going with this. What's on the ground is going to be is going to help us be able to do triple integrals, seeing the shadow on the ground. No questions on this, though? Pretty clear? OK, so if that's our region of integration, what does the triple integral turn out to be? So we have three integrals now. We're integrating over that box. We're integrating a function of three variables, which I cannot draw for you. Sorry, OK, can't do it. And we're integrating with respect to volume. So that little dv thing, I don't know if I can do this. I, I don't want to waste too much time, but um, well, in two-dimensional space with double integrals, we cut the region up into little infinitesimal pieces, and each one of these little areas was dx dy, wasn't it? And that little dx times dy represented our dA from our double integral. Now our region that we're cutting up, since it's three-dimensional, this is a box, but I'm taking a little slice of it, but I'm taking a little, a little cube out of it, like a little sugar cube, right? I'm saying, what's the volume of that little infinitesimal cube? It should be dx, dy, dz, right? Or dy, dx, dz, or dz, dx, dy. How many different combinations are there? Well, well, let's start with the easiest, OK? The easiest one is to go dz, dy, dx. This is the way you do it. If your, your, all your um, variables are bounded between two constants, can we change the order of integration? Could we change the order of integration when we had constants and double integrals? Yes, right? So it's the same thing with the triple integral. If you have three constant, or th your three variables are bounded by constants, then you can actually write this out dz dy dx or dz dx dy or dx dy dz. There's five, five others, so six total triple integrals you could do over a box. Your choice. So let's do this one. Evaluate this triple integral, x squared y z dv on 0, 2 crossed with 1, 2 crossed with 0, 1. So these are our restrictions on x. These are our restrictions on y. These are our restrictions on z. That's a box, so I can use the formula I just had up there. I'm going to choose to go dz, dy, dx. That's just my decision. What is it that I am integrating? X squared, y, z, right? And then my limits of integration, I'm going to go 0 to 2 here. That's my x's. 1 to 2 here, that's my y's. 0 to 1 here, that's my z's. Now, like we did before, we started from the inside and worked our way out, right? So I'm going to go with this inner integral first and then work my way out. So this should be equal to antiderivative of x squared y z with respect to z is what? One, one half x squared y, I didn't hear you, z squared. z squared, OK, everyone agree? Evaluated z equals 0 to z equals 1, right? That's the inner integral. And then I'm going to have to, after that, do dy dx. So do you already see that this is exactly what we've done? Just we have one additional integral that we have to do, one additional variable to deal with. All right, let's let z be 1. Nice. z is 0. Even nicer, right? So this will turn into double integral, 0 to 2, 1 to 2. And 1 half 
x squared y. That's all we're left with when we plug in 1 and 0. d y dx. And now you're pretty much at what last class at the class before, right? You're now at a double integral. So you just go the rest of the way with this. Okay? Just one little additional step. Now, these are the least complicated triple integrals you can ever get. So, of course, we were going to have to make it a little more complicated, right? Any questions, though? Yes? Are you, are we always going to be given Z? So if I could drill it down at the domain region, do we really can't tell where Z is? If you're, are we always going to be given Z? How do you mean? The bounds point? This? Yeah. Oh, no. See, because this is like, again, remember, this, this domain, this E right now, is a box. We want our domains to be things that are more interesting than boxes. And so, like, you know, take um, a sphere in the first octant, just that first octant part of a sphere or a ball. You take a ball and just take the piece that's in the first octant. I want that to be E. How do we integrate over that? Because you can't say x and y and z are all between three uh, constants because it's not a box. So that's what's more interesting to us. So we, we'll see. Hang tight. You'll see how that's going to work out. <clears throat> Actually, it's going to happen like right now, too. All right. All right. So how about a triple integral over region E? So we have a solid, right? I'm not going to tell you exactly what it looks like. But wh here's what I will tell you. If you take this solid and you cast its shadow down onto the xy plane, its shadow is a type 1 region from a double integral. So here's what I'm talking about. Whoa, why is that so big? Here's what I'm talking about. I have a solid up here, OK? And all I'm telling you right now is that when you cast that shadow down to the ground, that region on the ground is type 1. I mean, that's not working. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to rotate this damn thing so you can see it. All right, that's good enough. Is that a type 1 region from a double integral? x is between two constants, y is between two functions of x. Actually, I think I need to reevaluate this. There we go. OK, so that I'm back on the ground. That's type 1. Um, I'll show you our, our x labels. So our x's are between a and b. Our y values between two functions of x. And now I'll show you the region. I, I was hiding that from you, OK? But there it is, OK? Do you see, you know, from the top, that's how I get that region, the shadow on the ground. But this, the z values, OK? The z values are actually stuck between what? Two functions of x and y. See, this is a surface, isn't it? So it's a function of x and y. This is a surface, so it's a function of x and y. So your x's are between two constants. Your y's are between two functions of x. And your z's are between two functions of x and y. That is the type of region we're interested in integrating over, at least to start. So this is the way we look at that region. And this is just what I had down here. A is between two constants. Y is between g1 of x, g2 of x. And then z is between two functions of, of x and y. So we call them normal notation u sub 1 of xy, u sub 2 of xy. If that's your region, if that's what it looks like, then here's the formula for it.